Hey guys, welcome to my channel. We are reading Diary of the Wimpy Kid. Look at my little cat. A little adorable. And then I have my other one. Um, she's like trying to make me read this. She always sits here and like reads it. But we are doing um, book nine. And we are actually on part two. And uh, we are going to be going off of page 46. Sorry, my camera's not working weird. Um, and 47. And these are going to be the pictures we're looking at today. He's in the car. But here we go. I tried to make myself comfortable, but with all the stuff piled around me, it was impossible. Luckily, my backpack wasn't an arm reach behind my seat because it had some books and other things I had brought to entertain myself. Mom always tries to get me to read stuff that in reaching, but when it comes to books, I know what I like. And ever since elementary school, my favorite book have been the ones in the Underpants uh, Bandit series. The Underpants Bandit books are about these two kids named Bryce and Brody, Brody, who go back in time and steal underwear from a famous people so they can put the underwear pants in the museum. Underpants Bandits by Mike Davis. I know that sounds kind of ridiculous, but the books are eventually pretty funny. And just as Van Gogh returned to his masterpiece, Bryce snatched the painter's favorite pair of boxers which thank goodness were clean the books are so popular with the boys at my school but the teachers hate them because of all the rude rumors whenever the book report was due in fifth grade all the boys in my class did their own one on the underpants books and that made my teacher miss terry hate them even more underpants bandit and the shakespeare shivies luke howell underpants bandits and napoleon britches matt travis underpants band uh cleopat pants um our class had a project where we had to write a letter to our favorite author of course all the boys showed mike Davis's. But Miss Terry said we had to pick someone else. So I grabbed a random book from the library and wrote my letter to the author I'd never heard of before. March 30th. Dear Nathaniel, my teacher made us write to an author, so I picked you. I have not read any of your books. No offense. Here are my questions for you. What's your favorite color? What's your favorite animal? What is your favorite flavor of ice cream? What's your favorite superhero? I would appreciate it if you could answer me soon, please. Because I am getting graded on this. Sincerely, Greg Heffley. But I probably should have checked the year that the book was written before I wrote my letter. May 20th. Dear Heffley, we regret to inform you that the author he had written to, Mr. Hawthorne, uh, passed away more than a century ago. As such, we will not be able to respond to your question with regrets. A Katrina Wilker uh, publisher. Most parents don't like the Underpants Bandit books either. In fact, the PTA had a meeting that year. Oh my gosh, this book is like really hard to read because it's not it, I don't know how to explain it um okay in fact the PTA had a meeting that year where they decided parents tax dollars shouldn't be used to purchase any of the underpants band and books for the library <sighs> when we came back to school from the spring break all the underpants band and books in the library were gone I hope these adults were happy when a whole generation of boys grow up not knowing how to read. 
when the school banned the Underpants Bandit books, it just made them more popular than ever. Some boys snuck their copies from home and passed them on to other kids. One kid it even brought a bootleg copy of the Underpants Bandit books from Japan. I couldn't understand the, a word of it, but it was pretty easy to figure out from the picture what was going on. I actually wrote the author on my own just to tell them how much I liked his series. August 18th. Dear Mr. Davises, I ju I'm just writing to tell you I don't listen to these people who say your books are garbage because don't they don't know what they're talking about. I know a bunch of kids, including me, who think your books are great. As far as the room, uh, rude room, uh, humor goes, I find that stuff hilarious. So please don't change a thing. In fact, I would encourage you to put more bodily functions and things of nature in the books. Sincerely, Greg Heffley. I've never written a fan letter like that. And every day when I got home from school... I ran to the mailbox to see if Mike Davis's has written me back. I finally got a response um, almost a year later, and I was really excited. But I read the letter, and it was huge disappointment. From the desk of Mike Davis's, Dear friend, unfortunately, I get so much fan mail, I'm not able to answer your letter personally. But I did want to tell you to be on the lookout for Underpants 24, Lincoln Long Johns, coming soon to the stores near you. Lots of yucks, Mike. I couldn't believe I poured my heart out to this guy and all I got back was an ad. Even though that whole experience left a bad taste in my mouth, I still like his books. At least I get to read whatever I want this summer. Roderick School gave him a whole list for required reading, and some of the books look like a lot of work. Jan Err, Moby Dick, A Tale of Two Cities. But Roderick, uh, Roderick's not much of a reader, so he rented all the movie versions of the book on his list. Mom said it's not smart to watch the movie without reading the book because they usually change a lot of stuff. But Roderick said as long as he got the basic idea, he'd be fine. I think he approach, his approach is going to cause problems, though. The Lord of the Rings is on his summer reading list, but when he rented the movie, he wasn't careful about checking the title. R Roderick watched the movie twice. And the second time he told mom that whoever wrote the book must be genius. But I'm guessing Roderick's teacher is going to be pretty confused when she reads his book report in September. Crunch pound. By the time I was done reading today, I really needed to get out of the car to prevent my legs from permanently cramping. Manny was still asleep, but he had somehow turned himself all the way upside down in his seat when mom noticed she told dad maybe we should stop driving for a night a day so he pulled off at the next exit i was really looking forward to eating a meal at the decent restaurant but mom said we're on a budget and tonight we were gonna pick up our dinner at the grocery store dad found a supermarket a few miles from the exit but mom was afraid that if the van stopped moving Manny would wake up and have to fit. So mom wrote uh, wrote out a shopping list for Roderick and gave him some money. Then dad drove really slow in the front of the entrance so Roderick could hop out. Dad had to circle the parking lot about 10 times, which wasn't easy since we were towing a boat. Eventually, Roderick came out with a couple bags of groceries, and from the look of it, he picked up some extra items him for himself. When Dad pulled the van around, Roderick hopped in. Then we started looking for a place to stay for the night. 
but the selections in the area wasn't that great. Motel, air condition, cheap, cheap motel v- facility. Sleep tight, clean room, motel. A few of the motels had a big sign that said they had color TV, which, if you ask me, is not anything to brag about in this day and age. Dad finally pulled over at the place with air conditioning and a pool, which sounded pretty good to me, especially considering that I lost about five pounds in sweat sitting in the back seat. I haven't stayed in a whole lot of motels, but if I had to guess, I'd say we picked one of the lower end of the spectrum. The lobby smelled like mildew and the carpet was covered in weird stains, but everyone was too tired to get back in the car and look for another place to stay. We got the key to our room when we walked in and reeked of smoke. There were little holes in the comforter and pillows that I'm pretty sure with cigarette burns. Dad picked a towel off the floor then dropped it because it was wet. Mom went back to the front desk and asked for a different room, but the clerk said the motel was full and that we'd gotten the last one. Mom told her, in that case, we were going to leave and take our business to another motel. But the clerk told her there was a 24-hour cancellation policy, so we couldn't get our money back. When Mom returned to the room, she said that we're going to have to try to make the best of the bad situation. Then she and Dad stripped the bed down to the bare mattress. Believe it or not, Manny slept through all of this. Mom said that if he woke up now, he'd be awake up all night. So she just, I gotta let him sleep through till morning. Mom put Manny down in the middle of the sofa bed and pulled the blanket over him. The rest of us were really hungry, so we emptied out the grocery groceries Roderick bought. But it turned out he didn't buy anything on Mom's list. Roderick was supposed to get sandwich supplies, orange juice, and stuff like that, but he just got a bunch of things he likes. Mom was pretty upset that Roderick didn't get a single thing on the list she gave him, but his excuse was that he couldn't read her handwriting. Mom told him it wasn't very smart to get cinnamon rolls and a frozen pizza since those things needed an oven, and we didn't have one. But Roderick said that we could microwave the pizza. Then he then he put it in to a microwave oven to prove it. At least Roderick thought it was a microwave. It was actually a safe. By the time he figured that out, the pizza was locked inside. Mom gave me what was left of her cash and said to go down to the vending machine to get some nutritious stuff I could find. And that's how we ended up eating sugar wafers and breath mitts for dinner on the first night of the road trip. Sunday. Last night we couldn't watch TV or do anything in the room because Manny was asleep on the pull-out sofa. Mom wouldn't even let us keep the light on. So we all sat in the dark for a while until me and Roderick to go down, uh, decided to go down to the pool to kill some time. Well, the sign outside of the motel said that there was a pool. But there was no actual water in it. And it didn't look like there had been for at least five years. There was a hot tub near the pool that did have water in it, but some family was already using it, so me and Roderick waited our turn. Unfortunately, the family couldn't take the hint that we wanted to use the hot tub. So eventually, me and Roderick just went back to the room. The lights were still out, and Mom and Dad were asleep on the mattress. I guess that must have been pretty exhausted because they were still wearing all their clothes. With Mom and Dad on the bed and Manny on the sofa, it didn't leave a lot of room of good sleep options for me and Roderick. 
We checked the closet for the a coat or an air mattress, but there was nothing. Roderick was one step ahead of me, though. He gathered up the sofa cushions and made a bed for himself on the floor. Five seconds later, he was out cold. I figured the closet was a good place as any for me to sleep, so I got some towels out of the bathroom and laid them on the floor. After laying there for a minute, I noticed a terrible smell and thought a mouse must have died in the vent or something. I tried covering my nose with a washcloth, but that seemed to make the smell even worse. It was hard enough trying to fall asleep under those conditions, but then someone in the room started snoring. Luckily, I was prepared for that. Mom and Dad both snore, which is the reason I thought ahead and brought earplugs on the trip, but it was so dark in the room, I could only find one in my duffel bag, so I had to try sleeping with an ear the earplug in my left ear and my other ear pressed on the floor. I did eventually fall asleep for a few minutes, but woke up to some kind of ruckus going on outside. When I looked out of the peephole, I saw something flash by, but I couldn't tell what it was. So I cracked open the door and see what was going on. Turns out those kids from the hot tub had gotten their hands on the cleaning cart and were ramming into the walls. I couldn't believe these kids' parents were letting them run wild in the middle of the night, so I stepped out of the room and went over to the to give them the peace of my mind. A little kid burst out into tears and ran into his room, and I didn't feel bad for even one second. But a minute later, his door opened again, and his father came out. I wasn't about to get yelled at by a grown man in my underwear, so I ran back to our room and locked the door. Then I prayed with all my might that the chain lock was strong enough to keep him out. I guess the kid's dad didn't see which door I went into because he knocked on the wrong one. Then he pounded on the door right next to ours before giving up and going to the room. His room. Once the coast was clear, I hung a little sign on our doorknob in case the guy decided to come back. It was really hard falling asleep after that because every time I heard someone outside the door, I held my breath until they passed by. Before I knew it, the sun was up and so was Manny. Mom turned on the television and whenever Manny watches TV, he talks to it. What sound does a ducky make? Quack, quack. I was a little annoyed with Manny blubbering away, but I guess I can't complain. I used to do the same exact thing when I was younger. One time when I was watching my favorite show, the host asked a question. What should I draw on this box? I don't know. Polka dots? I was just goofing around when I answered, but the guy on television actually responded. Okay, polka dot it is. I wish I ne uh, it would I wish it never happened though because for a long time after that I thought the people inside the TV could hear everything I said. And how are you today? I could I could be better. My brother Roderick. That's great. In fact, on my 6th birthday, mom had to sit me down and, and have a talk about the difference between imaginary friends and real friends. Hey, did you happen to see what my parents got me? It's a bike, isn't it? Blink twice if the answer is yes. Once Manny got uh, got going in the conversation with his favorite television characters this morning, I knew there was no point in trying to fall back asleep. So I just got up for the day. And when I did, I found out the source of that awful smell. Roderick had put his shoes in the closet, and I had spent the whole night breathing his fumes. But even worse was that the washcloth I had used to block the smell was actually one of Roderick's socks. Speaking of Roderick, Manny's conversation with the television didn't bother him one little bit because he just slept right through all the noise. Can you hop like a frog? Hop, hop. 
Dad was getting a little restless, waiting for everyone to get going this morning. He's one of the, those guys who gets up every day at the crack of dawn so he can arrive at his office early. And this whole late start thing wasn't working for him. Eventually, Mom made Roger get up and take a shower. We went to dinner, a diner, right next to a motel for breakfast, then got back to in the van. Mom said that from now on, on we were all going to be on the same sleep schedule so we wouldn't waste any more time on our trip. But before she was even done talking, Manny passed out in his car seat. Mom's big plan for the day was for us to go to a county fair she read about on the family folk. i never been to anything like that before, but it looked like it was worth checking out. Highway 1, 130th anniversary, country fair, number one for family fun, food, contest prizes. The fair was a few hours away, so that meant me being cramped in a back seat again, which was starting to get old. Thankfully, after an hour, Mom offered to switch places with me. When I got up to the front seat, I couldn't believe how much room there was. And it wasn't just all the space that was awesome. I even had an individual temp uh, temperature setting and my own cup holder. I went to change the radio station, but Dad stopped me. He said only the driver gets to pick the music. I didn't think that was fair, but it wasn't going to complain to risk getting sent to the back seat. My truck is busted, but my dog, he loves me. Dad's music was pretty awful, but the view totally made up for it. When you're in the back seat, you don't have any sense of what's ahead. Get, uh, sitting in front, I had the whole new perspective and could almost see why Mom was so gunged ho about taking this road trip. When we took the exit to the county fair, we came to a stoplight. We were behind a minivan that was the exact model as ours, only purple. The kids in the van looked kind of familiar. It took me a second to realize that they were the same ones from last night. I hadn't told mom or dad about the incident with the kids and the cleaning cart because I was worried I wouldn't come out of looking too great. And they definitely didn't need to know about my run-in with Mr. Uh, Beardu. The kids in the purple van recognized me right away and started making obnoxious faces. I wasn't going to just sit there and take it from those little punks, so I made a face back at them. The skinny ones made the exact same face back at me, and the second one he did. The light turned green, and they accelerated. When the when their van lurched forward, the kid's face plunked onto the black window. Dad passed them um, on the left. Mr. Bernard got a really good look at me. Luckily, the parking lot for the fair was only a few hundred feet up the road. Once we stopped, I, I wanted to stay inside. Till it was pretty sure we weren't being tailed by the purple van. But it looked like we were in the clear. Manny was still asleep in his car seat. So mom said she'd stay back with him and the rest of us could go on ahead. The fair was a lot different than I thought it was going to be. I expected it to have a Ferris wheel and a merry-go-round and stuff like that. But instead there were a bunch of tents with farm animals and booths and homemade food. We were getting kind of hungry anyway, so we went looking for something to eat. They had corn on the uh, corn dogs, fried dough, and all stuff like you'd expect at the big fair. But then they had crazy things like deep fried butter on a stick. It was actually, I was actually glad mom was still in the van because I was pretty sure that kind of thing didn't qualify as real food in her book. After about an hour of walking to the fairgrounds, Dad went back to the car to see if Manny was awake yet, and he told me and Roderick to go explore on our own. The two of us wandered around for a while until we came across a tent where there was something big going on. 
It was a fullest footwear contest, and they were offering a prize to whoever had the nastiest shoe. There was a big line of people ready to submit their entry foulest footwear contest. I told Roderick he should enter because it, if anyone deserved to win this thing, it was him. While we were waiting in line, me and Roderick got in an argument over who would get to keep the prize. I said we should split 50-50 because it was my idea, but he said he should get the whole thing because it was his shoe and he was the one who made it stink. Right before we got to a judging table, we reached the compromise where I'd get 10% of the prize and Roderick's agent. Some of the other shoes looked a lot worse than Roderick's, but it was losing. I was losing confidence that he'd win. But when judges got the smell test, it was all over. Roderick won first prize, which turned out to be a coupon for one deep fried butter on a stick. I told Roderick he could have it all to himself because the thought of eating any more butter made me feel a little nauseous. Roderick asked the judges for his shoe back, but they said that they were going to send it on to a national competition. So that left Roderick walking around with only one shoe. I decided to explore the nearby stalls while Roderick was polishing off his stick to uh, fried butter. But I had seriously clo uh, close call when I turned the corner and almost ran smack into the uh, entire Beardo family. Luckily, it was able to duck to cover just in time. Now that I knew the uh, Beardos were on the fairgrounds, I was eager to get out of there. I went to look for Roderick, but he must have gone back to the van. I decided to head there myself, but on my way, I stopped on the, the top where Mom's head in the crowd under one of those livestock tents. People were packing shoulders to shoulder and I tried pushing my way through to get where mom was. But when I got halfway in, a bit, a, the big cheer went up. Hooray! When I finally made it up to the front, I was surprised to see Manny standing in the middle of the crowd holding a piece of paper. Apparently, there was a contest to see who could come to the closest of guessing the weight of the hog. And Manny got the exact right. The prize for guessing the hog's weight was a real live baby pig. Mom ex explained to the judge that they would just entered the contest for fun and didn't actually want the pig. But the people in the crowd seemed kind of insulted and wouldn't take no for an answer. With all the commotion this is causing, I was nervous and the Beer uh, Beardo family was going to come over to the livestock tent to see what was going on. Luckily, by then, Mom seemed re uh, ready to get out of there herself, and we made our way to the exit. Dad was sitting in the van with the air conditioning cracked up, um, and when he saw Mom carrying a pig, he was a little taken by surprise. And that is the end of part two. I will see you guys in part three. Thank you for listening.